Actually, she will only understand it completely after she takes her chaski tour through South America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope, I hope that will take place. Yes. Uh, even though it's not, it's not easy <coughs> to organize now. Um, <coughs> The Chasky Fests, there's a manual you can read. Have, have you read the manual? Have you read it? Uh, it's a manual for everybody who organizes Chasky Fests. You don't have this. <laughs> she has been reading the letters you, you sent in connecting. It's a, it's a manual. So everybody likes to party. Usually parties are the emblem of waste of time. <laughs> but there has been a party made popular in America. It's called Bhakti Fest. Then there is another party which has started. It's called Holy Fest. This has become so popular, it even has already reached Germany. It started in India, then it went to, then it went to America. Now from America it has come to Germany. So in one way, conscious art is always the same. Conscious art means to be, to be conscious about Mother Earth to have some values of respect, etc. In the case of Iquashenduna, when conscious art connected with Iquashenduna, it became more committed. Actually, the natives of South America <coughs> who connected the World Conscious Pact with the name Iquashenduna, <coughs> they were very concerned that Iquashenduna does not become a hippie term. Because it's not. Iquashenduna means the guardians of Mother Nature, which is a a topmost distinction. I mean, you don't give a PhD to everybody just because he can count to ten. <laughs> because then the meaning of PhD would be finished. So the guardian of Mother Nature or the union of the guardians of Mother Nature, they have accepted the, the conscious artists as culture ambassadors. In other words, the, 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 the musicians who go to the Shasky Fest, we expect from them that they are ambassadors of uh, of the guardians of of the guardians of Mother Nature. Giridari is a guardian of Mother Nature. He don't make music. He he is defending in the law departments, in the organizational part. Satvika 
she is representing this idea in the future vision of education. Everybody can connect with something. But you have to know clearly what it, what's the responsibility. So therefore the Chasky festivals, I will explain to you <coughs> what they include. Actually they started with the Spoon Revolution. Spoon Revolution, that was the, 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 the we make music and defend animals. And graphics for defending animals. But the original kingdom and the Spoon Revolution, they always had the environmental part of it. But when we were joined with Vandana Shiva and we started the World Conscious Pact, We wanted to make it different. In the Spoon Revolution, it's vegetarianism plus environmentalism. Actually, you cannot separate the two. But many of the big organizations who are environmental organizations, they are not promoting vegetarianism. To understand this, you have to s watch the documentary Cowspiracy. That explains the situation very much. So with Vandana and Shiva we decided that rather we should make it environmentalism with vegetarianism. And not even radical vegetarianism. Why? because we are also catering to all the indigenous communities. And the indigenous communities of the planet, basically they are vegetarian, but not strictly. They have some hunters amongst them. They have some fishers. Some of these tribes are not so agriculture yet, they're living in the jungles. But today, they start to look for Mother Earth because they see Mother Earth is going down the drain with what we are doing. Can you imagine you are living in the forest since 10,000 years? or 20 or 30, who knows how many, how much time they're living there. Nobody knows when it started. And they're living in the environment and they're protecting their forest. And everything is okay. And everything is okay. And then all of a sudden, some guys arrive in big boats. They pull big iron structures from the boats. They drill in the ground where you are living and something is doing like this. And they're pumping oil out of the ground. And that's already strange, strange, strange. But then they have the oil spills because everywhere you do oil drilling, there's always a danger of oil spills at well. So these, these wonderful people all of a sudden see black liquid going around and going into the river and making strange formations with many colors. And all of a sudden the fish are dying and all of a sudden their agriculture is affected and their children are dying. You know what they, they must be thinking? When we, I was educated to think that people in the jungles are primitive. That's the way I was educated. 
the people was not so much thinking about and uh, I was cheated I received the wrong education and even when I started working in South America because I was before a communist so I very much believed in equality so I believed that the natives in the jungles and the women and the black black color people they have all the same value and all the same rights I have I had a strong belief in that from socialism not from capitalism <laughs> capitalism capitalism doesn't practice this equality socialism attempts it or has it on the agenda and as a devotee of Srila Prabhupada of course I had a new education which is which is a we are not this body education and as a we are not this body education we know anyway that all these physical differences are not really important but this was my theory but deep under it I was still cheated by my educational system I was still thinking well they're living in the jungles they probably don't have the same intellectual ability as we have and I only realized that three years ago because in this world we have a big problem called communication communication is as you have you can talk to somebody you understand their language and they understand your language and there is also some understanding of idiosyncrasies because many people use the same words but mean different things so you talk with somebody and he says a word and you go ah yes but you think something different than what he is thinking <laughs> this is in Sanskrit it is called sputa the sputa vada not only the sound but what does it stand for what does he mean when he uses this sound? So you really have to know a people if you want to know about a people. So, this thinking of mine was educated into me. I would identify it as use Eurocentric uh, megalomania <laughs> in some other we think that we know even though we don't know but we are aggressive enough to impose our what we think we know when I was invited to the meeting in uh, 2012 I, I felt very honored my heart was telling me you must go there I had lecture appointments in New York and in Santo Dominican Republic and if you know me, I never cancel anything. If I have an, I have, if I have an agenda or schedule, it's like clockwork. But at that moment, I said, 
cancelled. <coughs> I'm not going to New York. I'm not going to Santa <coughs> I'm going to the jungles where I was invited. <coughs> the reason I was invited was because the natives, they were looking for white men who is half sane. <laughs> and because they, they also have their investigations, so they saw our eco-yoga farms, which Krishna has given to us with our work, or better said, with his mercy. They have gone there, they have looked, and they've had some relationship with some devotees. So I was selected as a representative of these farms and be invited to a meeting of the chiefs. They invited chiefs from Tunisia, Russia, Canada, all the way down to Argentina. Finally, we were like 40, 50 representatives in the first meeting. The second one was 60. You could say they are samples. Because there could have been 300, 400, 500. There are so many groups in the world. So many tribes. Only in Colombia we have 100 original tribes, over 100. Actually 110. And in one of their meetings, they discussed amongst themselves, who are these people dressed with this strange color? Because they were white. So we were suffering. <laughs> so, who are these people? And, and we are in their place here. So they came up with the idea that we are a new indigenous tribe. <laughs> The, you have the colors, uh, these are the union of all the tribes. So they said, this is the Krishna tribe. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, since they always have their elders, so, so I, I'm invited to the meetings as an elder of the Krishna tribe. <laughs> That's how it worked. And in love and exchange, they also made me a leader of their tribe. Like a leader means to recognize that somebody is somebody is working for Mother Nature. Anyway, it's a little background story. But then I heard them speak. And I was so amazed. I was, I was blown away. They were speaking so beautiful. They understood so many things. And they have their cosmology, a spiritual cosmology. And they say the whole problem of the planet is that we have given up our spirituality. Tell that to the priest in the church, <laughs> that, that he has given up spirituality and just put it into an institution of power. But basically, that's what it has become. Because behind all the disasters in this world, there's either people who call themselves Christians or Muslims or Jews. 
are Chinese. <laughs> Who knows what's that? <laughs> or <coughs> capitalists. And many Indian people nowadays are capitalists. <coughs> Maybe you have heard of BRIC. Brazil, Russia, China, South India, India, Africa. And India. So it's considered a, a upcoming economy. Southern Africa. No, South Africa. South Africa also. And why is it an upcoming economy? Because globalization outsources many things into cheaper countries. And Bulgaria is one of those outsourcing countries. Here we have some out outsourcing victims <coughs> even present with us. <laughs> so this is this is the big panorama. Globalization. For what purpose? They know. <laughs> Making money at any cost. But the natives who I was talking to, who, who I was listening to, they had a different view on life. And the truth is, their view is right. And the view of the modernization exploitation society is suicidal. So here I'm sitting in between, a little Hare Krishna monk, living in the big society of New York, Paris, uh, Sofia and Delhi. And on the other side, I have the chiefs who are up on that mountain, up on that mountain, down there in this jungle, in that jungle, transporting each other still by canoes, pedaling for hours or days in the rivers to get to their village. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm in the middle of this. <laughs> it's kind of a strange situation, no? It really is. But when they spoke, they said, we want to work together with you people who are chaskis. They are chaskis who protect Mother Earth. They protect Mother Earth. Together with those who are, uh, who have some appreciation for the divine, they have an appreciation for the divine, and they explain that very nicely. I would say eloquently, poetically. Artistically, like what you can call a refined way of human culture. Those people who I had been trained up to think that they're a little primitive, that they can't understand modern man. It's not true. They do understand modern man. But modern man doesn't understand them. You got it? We don't understand them. <coughs> but they understand us. They understand that we are off the wall. Of course, this is a this is a a historical situation because I respect them. I'm more one of them than one of them. But at the same time, I'm also using the technologies of them. 
I have connections in the world of them. So, as a matter of fact, they invited me to create this link for the welfare of Mother Nature. This is all going on simultaneously. We are, finally, we are not talking about one or two or three meetings. We are talking about hundreds of meetings, almost going on every day. Even this morning we had one of them, with the Bulgarian section of Ikvashito, or a part of it, because Srivas was not in the, in the conversation. Priyavrata. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. So lovely that you come to listen to my class. Come here. The young intellectuals are the hope for something new in this world. <laughs> so then I spoke to them about our artists. Oh, they said we also have artists. If you listen to the last two musical productions, Abre Sierra Renace Bacata and the Amazonas production, you will hear something very interesting. One indigenous song, one white people modern style song. Another indigenous song, another white guy song. What does that mean? These two CDs, they represent a very strong embrace. It's a rasa dance circle. One indigenous, one white. One indigenous, one white. One indigenous, one white. Can you believe that? Is that a dream? Well, I have not only seen it in the city, I have, I have lived it. One night in Tijumake, it was becoming dark. Six o'clock, it was already getting dark. And there's no electricity. So all our meetings had finished. So I, I asked the chief priest of the locality. I said, what shall we do now? What's, what's the agenda? And he went like, hmm? <laughs> well, we don't really have an agenda for the night. Then I asked him, can we sing? He said, sing, sing, <laughs> yeah, why not sing? <laughs> so I started, I was lucky <coughs> because with me I had the Jagannat Vajenatu <coughs> band. Vajenatu is the music style of Colombia. The Jagannath Vajenatu band, they're my friends. Them, their disciples. So we started making music. <laughs> sometimes Colombian style, sometimes Indian style, and everybody got enthusiastic. And that went on from 6 to 12 o'clock midnight. It went on like changing from one to the other. One stopped, the other started. They have some special flutes. So they have pulled out the flutes. Wainas, they are called. And they started playing the wainas. And everybody was dancing. 70, 80 year old sagas means grandmothers. Young, <laughs> some 
some some who have come here from United Nations, from, from everywhere who was there. And we started to make circle dances. <laughs> and the only light we had was sometimes somebody made a, f uh, a, a flash. From, uh, I don't know, maybe one candle. But I don't know. I don't, I, so it was going on all night without a master of ceremonies. But six hour chanting, you can imagine we chanted all the songs we knew. <laughs> and again, it was sometimes we sang, then the indigenous people sang. Those who were there in that magic night, they can give the testimony. It was all songs for God. In many names, in many traditions, but everything was for God. We had a, a very religious night ceremony of what what we can also say, we can call it a payment. When you chant the name of God, it's a payment you make. Because you're getting so much mercy from God. You're getting food, air, everything. When you chant the names, or you make the sanctuary, the altar, this is a payment. I mean, if I make a joke about it, Lord Chaitanya and Kiri Raj, they're not paying rent here. <laughs> huh? This is our payment. We pay the rent, and they are the Lord. They have the number one position in this place. <laughs> huh? This is a form of payment. To offer your food is a form of payment. And to chant the holy names is a form of payment. And to hold classes like this, talking about the Lord, is another type of payment. So we sank till 12 o'clock. I was exhausted. So I lay down in a hanging mat. And next to me, one of the uh, assistants of Mamuluntano, who speaks perfect Spanish. Well, he was still talking to me for a while and we got enthused and I was talking about Krishna and he, he loved Krishna, he had already known something. I was, but all the indigenous chiefs, they went into one hut. This hut is called Kunkuru, Kunkura, Kunkura. They all went in there. But I was already lying half asleep. And I saw that in there there were many. I mean, this, this Kungura doesn't have any door uh, windows. It's just one door. It's big, bigger than this room. And there's one fireplace. The fire is burning continuously. So, then it was 1, one thirty, and I looked at this and said, they are still there. So I became curious, <coughs> what are they doing at this time of the night? What are these people doing here? So I got up from my, my, my hammock and went there, asked permission, can I come in? So the only light there was from the fireplace. So I said, just sat down. And what was my surprise? That they were listening to lectures. Just like we are lecturing here. One of the elders was talking. 
And after he talked for half an hour, somebody else started talking. And one of them sat next to me, and he started whispering some translation. Because they were not talking in Spanish. They were talking in Arwaku language, or in Kogi language. This is two tribes living there. So, it was very interesting. They were really searching spiritual answers for the dilemma of this world. And after it was 2.30 or so, all of a sudden the chief who was in, the, in that place, he said, now you speak. <laughs> huh? Two thirty in the morning, devastated, six hours dancing, all day sessions, and here I'm sitting with twenty, thirty awake men. There was no women in that school. They in the dancing, there were all women all over, but in this, in this <coughs> and that, they asked me to. <coughs> I can still, and I was talking, and they have a way when they hear something which they appreciate, they immediately say, mm. 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 <laughs> So I was talking and telling them my life and what I've seen and the world, and I got all the time, mm. I'm all over the side, man. How does this, you know? I never get that in a class from anybody. <laughs> Maybe sometimes they smile, they laugh when you cut a joke or something, no? But they you know, different culture, different people, no? <laughs> so, so I talked, and I don't know, maybe half an hour, 45 minutes, I don't remember. And so, um, and I could see that we, are, we, were, we were on the same wavelengths. They could understand my Indian upbringing, my Guru Deva Prabhupada. He would have fit in there perfectly. He could have listened to them and he could have spoken to them and they would, he would have been fully accepted. But this is a culture meeting which has been announced by the eight thousand drum prediction. There's a Mexican Vicholi prediction which says when the Maya calendar ends and the eight thousand drums start to sound, a shift of consciousness and paradigm will take place all over the world. So we believe in that. We hope for that, and we work for that. That's why we are together here. No, we are also together here because of Prabhupada. Because 500 years ago, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he brought a new paradigm to the world. But the new paradigm of Prabhupada and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the paradigm which can connect these two worlds. Because it's very difficult to find somebody to connect them. There was only one environmental lawyer with me. He was invited separately. He is a he's an environmental lawyer who has been protecting great amounts of lands and forests where the natives were by valiantly fighting against big corporations who wanted to devastate their habitat. So because of his service he had done for the nature, they had invited him. I didn't know him. After this meeting we are friends like this. Very, 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 very strong connection. Because he's really, he's not only 27 years old, but he risked his neck 
to, to go against big machineries. The Colombian government had given a license of 80,000 hectares of forest to be to be put down at the, the gold exploited by a Canadian co company. And, and there was many people living there. They never consulted with them. Huh? People, mad, mad, mad politicians, you know? So, one, the name of the lawyer. We spoke to him the other day, right? Yes, we did. Yeah? Yes. Yes, one, <coughs> one went, he, on one side he made a court case against this license, then he went there to the jungle, he went like fum, 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 fum. Finally, when the machines arrived and they were starting to bulldoze in there, there was natives in front of the machines. You bulldoze over us first, if you want to get, with the press and everything. He got this whole thing cancelled. He won the court case. They had no right to do that what they were doing. But this is one drop on a stone, hot stone. The environmental injustice is committed in this planet right now, at this moment. There's many, 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 many. And we need people like this lawyer. And he, he was, he risked his life. Because the indigenous people could not have done what he did. They didn't have the connection to go to Bogota and make a court case and we, they call it a tutela. To, to go to the chief control of the country says, you stop this. They have no right to do that. This is a faulty law and faulty license. And he won. In the environmental law, he became a world famous lawyer. But it's like this, you know, many, many things are going on, you know, the defense of the rights of Mother Nature, all this came in. Of course, that's when he became very close with, with Atikigwa, who had been an environmental protector of, of her own. She had done this. Meeting Atikigwa, she's, she just went to Mexico. And she gave a lecture to 300 university professors who had all come to meet her. And she had all of them cry. So the Chaskis, they have a great responsibility. They're supposed to bring the sacred atmosphere into the area of the young people, of old people, who are looking like for, for a festival. They're looking for a happy weekend. And a Chusky Fest, like we had a Chusky Fest yesterday. That was... Yeah, yeah, they did. Well, it was a Chusky Fest also when we chanted for Mother Nature. You know, whenever people get together and start chanting for the... That's actually, it's a kind of a chasky. We had the agreement with Spoon Revolution, World Conscious Pact, uh, Chasky Fest, that every time a Chasky Fest takes place, we should have, number one, vegetarian food. Number two, Promotion of the conscious artist. And the conscious artist promoting the rights of nature. There should be okis, means many leaflets, with messages of the same. And then there's other technicalities. How to conduct it. Like one thing is to invite many musicians. And each, each one of them singing one or two songs. But I experience that is not that powerful. It loses concentration. <coughs> it is better in a Chusky Fest to have one musician or maybe two. 
And they are the stars of the day. And they make the rights of nature come out. Maybe you can have some circle dances. There is no hard and fast rules. It depends on the charisma of the chaski and the master of ceremonies to make it a real fantastic festival. But one thing I want to tell you, the Chasky Fest is something which should take place every week in every city. Mm. It's not something, oh, in one year we have three Chasky Festivals. That's not enough to reach the out. So those who are really Chaskis, culture ambassadors, they are pioneers. They are revolutionaries. They make sacrifice. They play without money. Well, if they have some CDs, they are welcome to sell some of their CDs. And that was one of the things. <laughs> that was one of the things of the Chasky Fest. We also wanted in every Chasky Fest to have a table to promote the other Chaskis. <laughs> That's where Mahavishnu comes in. But I have not explained it nicely to him. It is my fault. And I have not explained it nicely to the devotees. Because if you want to have a nice distribution of the chaski material, come Gopinath. Please come. Okay. So, if you want to have this distribution of chasky material, first you have to pro produce it. And then you have to distribute it. And then you have to also charge for it. Because these things are not for free. You can't make thousands and thousands of CDs for free. I myself, I am a freebie. I also give everything for free too. <laughs> but that doesn't work on a Chasky festival. It doesn't work in life. You have to charge something to cover the cost. So you are also wonderful Vaishnavas, you don't like to collect money. That's why you don't have money. <laughs> Sorry, just a joke, just a joke. <laughs> but a good Sankitan man, uh, a good Sankitan man knows, here's the CD, you should have it. Here's the book, you should have it. And now you put your ten leva here. Why? Because without it, I cannot print another book, my dear. Hmm? I cannot make another CD. Please, help me out. Oh, it's a little... No, it's not so nice, no? But it's necessary. And that's the way we can do Sankita. And you may call it Chasky Fest. But people still have to pay something to get a samosa. Or to get a CD. The whole thing has to work. By Krishna's grace, we even have a Chasky Festival bus. We have a transport vehicle. <laughs> 
Huh? So, which can help us to go to events and have the material. No? We even have some equipment, all by Krishna's grace. So, so in this way, we are, we are trying to get organized. So, we have to choose. Now, what are you going to copy? Which CDs are you going to distribute? That's a big problem. Because we have 2,000 different ones to choose from. But we cannot have 2,000 different ones because we don't have that much capital. Don't know do we have where to expose them. So the Bulgarian devotees and the members of the Chasky Fest they have to decide which ones of the many, many music productions we want to distribute. I give you one example. Patrick Bernard. He's like my second half. We love each other very much. And he's a great musician in Canada. He is, he's known as the most important New Age musician of Canada. And people usually love his music. You know his music? No. He told me, you can do anything with my music you want. <laughs> in other words, if we produce him here and start distributing here, we're not breaking any law. If we do this with Michael Jackson movie, <laughs> you know Michael Jackson made one, one song, the Mother Earth song, no? You, it's good, good message. But if you start selling that, <laughs> then you get somebody making a court case uh, against you. You're infringing copyrights of the United States. <laughs> huh? So, better don't do that. I mean, I don't know how you manage this in 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 Bulgaria, but in South America, nobody cares a fig for copyright laws. <laughs> hmm? that you, get, you get the newest music production on the road in the, in, the, in the sales places, sometimes a day before they come to the shop. You can already buy the latest of this and that and this and that. And you get it for a fraction. Like, they, the street sales of CDs, it's very important to understand this, very important. It's a, it's a crazy world. The street sales of CDs is approximately one dollar. That includes the profit of the man who makes the copy, and the profit of the one who sells the CD. <laughs> because otherwise it doesn't work, you know? Then you can you can buy any movie, any software, any 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 anything for one one dollar. Less than a euro. That's, that's the situation of South America, and nobody complains about it. Sometimes the Americans, they say, oh, we have to make something about this and confiscate the illegal CD copying and blah, 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 blah. But in South America, they can. <laughs> can't do anything. So what does it mean for us? For us, it means that our CDs, whatever we produce, can also not be more expensive than $1. Otherwise, we look like the strange capitalist. Of course, sometimes you have fancy CD covers, and they may be a little bit more expensive, but usually usually these type of cheap CDs, they just have a very simple cover, and not like that, no? There's not, they're not fancy. But this is, uh, this is something we, we also had to learn. Because the same CD which you get for one dollar in the street, if you go to a record store, the latest, 
what who the uh, Lady Gaga. Uh, well, they're charging fifteen dollars for the same CD. And if you go to iTunes, you pay one dollar for one song. Right? So basically that's it's a different there are two worlds. But we are in the world of the poor people. I'm working with the poor people and for the poor people. I'm not working for the for the industry. I'm not working with the the system who is making all these crazy arrangements. So therefore our CDs are very cheap. The only way you get a little bit more money for a CD, you know what it is? If the Chasky says, please help us, we are today here, we are from the, from the uh, music group, and if you want a signed CD, please, they are three dollars. Or five dollars. And then people who want to have a signed copy, from the artists. Okay, then they don't pay one dollar, they pay five dollar, take the CD, take it to the artist and he puts a signature and says thank you and gives them a hug. Huh? That's the only way to get a little bit more for your music. And even in the non-devotee, non-chasky festival world, it's a little bit becoming like that because there's too much, uh, there's too much pirating going on. So they can't really make money with the CD sales anymore. Anyhow, that's the reality of this world. It has nothing to do with me. I don't care about. I don't even care for CDs. I only believe in my own music I make. A drum. Why do I need instruments? I got a voice. Huh? Or I, I can play anything and we, we get, like, like we do, acoustic music, I mean. To me this is the most beautiful music and being together. But this is the modern world, good musics are being recorded. Patrick Bernard, when he records a new CD, he spends $15,000 in the studio to have it like shh, polished to the maximum degree. Shara? So, but this is where we decided that we should promote conscious music in the Conscious Art Festival, in the Chasky Fest, so we have to have people who have a table of music which you have to provide me with. And there's some lectures also. Lecture about Mother Nature, lecture, what is the Global Alliance? Well, we make a CD. Global Alliance, what is the Global Alliance? With a lecture of him, in, with a lecture and some songs of the, you know, which explains and how to participate, explaining our program. And if you're lucky, somebody buys it and listens to it. Because it's very difficult to get people's attention today. You know, we realized after many years of publicity and working, if somebody reads the book you are giving to them, he's giving his mercy to you. Not that you giving them mercy. Why? Because on the internet you can get so many books for free. Books for free, movies for free, poems for free. On the internet you can get everything for free. So if somebody spends his time to read your book, he's giving his mercy to you. His time. He's donating his time to you. Somebody even comes to your Chasky festival. They are donating their time to you because your time is like sucked from us. We have no more time. Sometimes we have no more time for our wives and our children. Because the, the whole world is sucking us on us for, for, the, for the time. <sighs> difficult job, no? We are in a world where it's a difficult job, but this is the task. And the rights of Mother Nature, this is our service to the Mother Nature, to the natives, to whom? To whom do we give service when we do that? To 
everybody. There's not one single person who's not being served. Like when we sit there in front of the museum. <coughs> or the, the people just walking there, walking there. They don't even pay attention. They don't know. These people sit there to serve you. And you don't understand that. They're not wanting something from you. They want to give something to you. But you're so stupid you don't understand it. Because you think they're like me, and I am exploiting everywhere, so they must be exploiting also. It's a, it's a Vedic paradigm which says you judge another person by your own condition. Explain a little more, I'm coming this. Okay, so, it's, it's such a complex responsibility. When I was in Kumbha Mela and working with Chidananda Saraswati, we met the richest people in the world richest Indian people, billionaires. And Chidananda Saraswati always talked to them and said, you have a, 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 a social responsibility to work for Mother Nature. The business social uh, uh, responsibility. And they always said, yes, 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 yes. You know, it's, it's like living between two worlds, you know. You're living between two worlds. And one of these billionaires then later he came to Peru on a, uh, he was given a speak on an international uh, banking system. Huh? And then he visited uh, with one devotee of us and he gave him $200 donation for uh, <laughs> for the food he was bringing. Uh, you know it's a very strange world very strange and I'm in the middle of this world I really don't know what I'm doing there either you know but when I was sitting in the in the mountain with these people in the room I was so happy because I knew they had invited me because Prabhupada had reached their heart and that is the real world the real world is the world of protecting Mother Nature. It's not the CD copying world. It is the message of the CD distributing world. We don't care for CD copying. We don't care for book printing machines. We do not, we do not care for, uh, even for a roof. Of course, good to have a roof and it's cold, no? But that's not. We will not give our, uh, up our ideal for, for the for having a roof. We prefer to live in a, in a yurta, in a, Mon in a Mongol yurta, somewhere like our ancestors did. You know? They got by. They had a good time. They made a fire, like in the Kunkurua. This is just a, a straw hut. Big and nice and worked. Works for years. Hmm? You don't need to have big cement structures everywhere like we do today. We think our, we are so advanced because we can uh, make all these far out constructions and have, and have bathrooms uh, with, golden, with golden fixtures <laughs> and things like that. It's not, we don't believe in that, you know. That is not our, our world we, we, we really admire. But we use them. Here you are using the camera. And maybe you load it up on the internet and then somebody may... We try to take out... We try to take out the nail with another nail. Hmm? Have you heard that example? Is that the Bulgarian example? Yeah. Clean, clean, clean. Huh? Clean, clean, clean. <laughs> <laughs> There is a proverb, same, same, same. So, you take out the nail with another nail. So, we are, we are using these things. We are using the Chasky Fest. We are using the laws of uh, the Global Alliance. We are using the, the instruments and the amplifier and the computers. But we know that they are not the goal. They are not what we should. We know that they are not what makes life worth living. I mean, 
I mean, I must admit, I like my iPad. <laughs> because the computers always took so much time to load up, and then usually you get some stupid window message, you know. Uh, don't turn it off, we are, we are recharging, <coughs> we are reading all your files, <laughs> and loading them down to Washington now, so <coughs> don't turn off your computer, you know. Uh, so, whereas with the iPad, you just turn it on and cling, and there's somebody on Skype you can talk to all of a sudden in, 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 in the jungles. Because the governments, in order to show their generosity, they put some uh, satellite dish or some, some, even in the jungles to some of the natives, they say, here, you have this, you have uh, uh, the solar panels and all this, and then you can call if you have some emergency here, then we will come with a helicopter and and bring out a sick guy. So this is like the the so-called opening to the indigenous people, no? But as a result of that, I can talk to some of them on Skype. <laughs> some some chief who is now they are invaded, you know? They always were invaded. For the last five hundred years people have been unjustly invaded, raped, culturally stripped both in India and India more. In India it was 300 years English and 700 or more years the, the Muslims. India has been totally a victim of this mentality of exploiting. So the world is going through changes. And these changes can only be crowned by Mahaprabhu's and his holy, holy name or by the consciousness of guardianship. You see, guardianship of Mother Earth. What does that mean? It means this. Mm -hmm. This is guardianship of Mother Earth. We all belong to each other. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. huh? Cooperate with each other. Cooperate with each other. <laughs> Look out for each other. Don't argue so much. Huh? Don't try to show to others that you're better. Huh? It is a, it is a, you could say the guardianship of Mother Earth is a human revolution. Just a few years ago, the stupid Bulgarians went with the stupid Germans and made war. <laughs> For no reason and no benefit. And what did they do? They lose part of their country. Huh? It's what stupid thing. And here we are sitting and we want to make friendships, c collective care. This is the revolution. Where is it coming from? We're from Prabhupada and from the natives. It's not coming from, from, uh, from uh, MIT uh, or Harvard University. This is not coming from uh, our so-called Western achievements. It violates. When they see us like this, they say, oh, look, the hippies. Huh? They will laugh about us. And then they make the G20 meetings and they make another few crazy laws how to kill the rest of us. Thank you. Thank World you. Conscious Paki Jai. Jai. Ki Jai. So this is, this is the real, it is much more, it's, it's, it's a spiritual revolution inside there. Hmm? And that's why we are here. If it's not for that, well, we would do something else. We would be surviving and maybe, maybe trying to, uh, to get a, a, one of those palaces. You know, everywhere you go, you see people they are building palaces for themselves. If they get money, they build a palace, usually much bigger than they need. All this energy spent in palace building that used to be spent in spiritual culture. Don't think that these people, these natives, they couldn't build palaces. Don't you see the, the, the Tyrona roads? You see the, the, where, what they made when they wanted to make a place for God? Whoa. Mm -hmm. Tiwanaku, pyramids. The, the South Americans I'm talking about. They had bigger cultures when we didn't even have roads here yet. They already had the whole thing, but the local people, the simple people, they just want to live in mud houses because they know that's a much healthier way of living. And here in Europe, what we, we, we built 
the big castles of the warlords. Whoever was a really bad warlord, he had to spend his war uh, profits for making some very big castles to to hide his treasures in there and throw rocks on the people when people come and trying to meet him. <laughs> that is our European culture. Hmm? These people in in the Inca times, they had fun. They had fun. They would make a wall, a wall like for a temple, which was like 10 meters tall, and they were using boulders, some of them the size of like this room, this part of the room, this big, but then they would fit them in with another one. Like nowadays we have this uh, system where one grabs in the other, no? So they also did that, but they cut this big rock a little bit here, a little bit there, and then put it in with another one comes from this side. And they made these, how did they do that? Nobody can know that. They, with what tools did they cut them? Granite, huh? They, they cut, cut things. Oh, what is this? They had no cranes. They had no machines. They just made that for fun. Because they didn't, they didn't need to do that. These joints are so perfect, you cannot put a, a razor blade in between. And there's no cement. And when they did that, thousands of years ago, it's still there. You go to Cusco, where this Mahaprabhu is going. He's the Lord of Cusco of the old Inca Empire. Huh? The devotees, I spoke to them the other day, they're just waiting when Mahaprabhu is coming. Because they're seeing the picture, how he's traveling all over, and having fun. <coughs> Anyhow, this was just a little start. So a Chaski fest is a festival which requires work. From our side, it's work. And we should be very careful not to get engaged with financial complications. So if anybody takes a CD or anybody takes a book, make sure the cost price comes back. That's your responsibility. Because we have to have an economy also. You can also go and, and raise funds. Some people say, oh, you can go to the European country and get funds. Some people can, but this is also a very complicated system. You have to be completely absorbed in serving them. They don't give money to those who go against them. And we are not exactly in favor of all their methods. So, I think it's time for breakfast. It's 10 o'clock. <laughs> anyway, I just wanted to explain to you a little bit the atmosphere and all the responsibilities. <coughs> It wasn't that much of a Srimad Bhagavatam class, no, but, but we have to take the time, this little time. Already on Sunday I'm leaving? In the morning, no? <coughs> Sunday in the evening, well, that we have another three days to think and share and plan and organize and entrust. Now, I want to know something. I want to know who has given donations to this temple in the last six months. I want to know who are our real friends and who really care for what we are doing. Because if you don't see anything with the money, you don't know. Because Lord, Krishna, Lord Jesus says, a man puts his money where his heart is. And even it may be painful, it is the truth. <laughs>